Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing a new movie review this week. Since next week is going to be Halloween, I can't believe it. But I'm about to review a cult favorite. It's definitely my new favorite now. And I knew I forgot when I did my top 53 Halloween favorites. Yeah, but if I did mention it, then that's good. I, I just thought that I forgot something, and I knew I did. But anyway, it did came out on July 16, 1993, the same time as Free Willy. Not a big fan of that movie, but then again, I, I wanted to see it instead of this. I'm talking about the Halloween cult classic, Hocus Pocus, which features the Sanderson sisters themselves, Winifield, Sarah, and Mary, all played by Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy and Jimmy. That's right. <laughs> Those three right there. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the Blu-ray combo pack that came out five years ago. I just actually picked this up um, last year at Best Buy for only uh, fourteen ninety nine. It was a good deal, so why not? Because um, I didn't even get a chance to pick this up when it came out because of... Um, the prices that went a lot higher for this. I mean, who would have thought that a movie that came out over 20 years ago would become a a high price item right there? <laughs> but I'm glad to see they're lowering it down. I mean, for those who haven't picked this up, and I know they have been picking up uh, the old DVD for years now. You know, the one that's non-anamorphic, which is also included on this release. But this one has a solid Blu-ray transfer. It looks so much better now in HD. And it's very pristine. It definitely blows uh, the DVD transfer right out of the sky. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and explodes too. <laughs> yeah. As you can see on the back too. It, it contains it. And I actually love the choice that they used for this release. I mean, because when the DVD came out, and I know the VHS tape had it as well, it always has that um, the purple uh, outline that they use. But this time they gave it a uh, an orange um, brownish uh, color, which definitely matches the the look of it because it's supposed to be Halloween anyway. So why not? And I actually like this better. Now the first time I saw this movie, I didn't get a chance to see it in theaters because I went to go see Free Willy with my uncle, along with my brother Jason. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed, but at least I got to see Keiko the Well on the big screen. Since he was the main star of the film anyway, I mean that's why people went to see that instead of Hocus Pocus. Though, some people went to see this and they were happy they did. And this was also considered to be uh, Bette Miller's favorite film, and also her favorite role of hers as Winifield. She loves it so much that she decided to dress up as her on her Divine Invention tour last year. Yeah. And this movie had gained its following ever since uh, during those uh, Disney Channel and ABC Family airings. In fact, um, the first time I saw the movie, we rented this at Blockbuster, so I had a chance to watch it. I really enjoyed it. I really loved it. It was a good idea for a film. It definitely works well for Disney, too, because they were going for a dark um, fantasy comedy with goofy elements uh, in the mix, which I never have a problem with that, and I'm happy that they went for it. And it's good to see that there's a lot of talent to Balve. Not only do you got Bette Midler, because she was very big at the time, you know, doing all these uh, all these movies uh, for Disney, because this was part of her uh, her picture deal with uh, Disney and Touchstone. You know, starting with um, Down and Out in Beverly Hills. I mean, that was another reason why she got that role. And Catherine and Jimmy, of course, was in the movie Sister Act, as we know it, and Sarah Jessica Parker was doing other stuff before this, so it was good. 
You got Omri Katz from Avery, Indiana. That was a popular show that aired on NBC, but I didn't get to see that until it aired on Fox Kids, so I had a chance to watch it later on. It did air it on the Disney Channel as well, in reruns. But it actually wasn't um, that big of a hit back then, since it only lasted one season, I believe. And that's a shame, but he was very good in this. Was surprisingly was originally written for Leonardo DiCaprio for Max and hard to believe that he was going to actually play the role before Omri Katz uh, took over. Uh, he wasn't going to do it at first uh, because due to his illness but then he decided to come back. So just to continue. Because Leonardo DiCaprio went on to do What's Eating Gilbert Grape which Surprisingly, it turned out to be his Oscar-nominated uh, role. He didn't win, though, until The Revenant came along. <laughs> but still, yeah. <laughs> and they also had uh, Vanessa Shaw from uh, the movie Ladybugs uh, with Rodney Dangerfield. Also has Jonathan Brandis, uh, along with Eileen Graff from Mr. Belvedere. And... Jack A. Harry from 227 and Sister Sister. <laughs> yeah. And also for Birch uh, from the movie Patriot Games, along with its sequel, Clear and Present Danger. She was also in the movie All I Want for Christmas. She later went on to do the movie Ghost World and Dungeons and Dragons, yeah, that, which was an awful film, by the way. Uh, then you got uh, Sean, F I think he went on to do something big and or so. And they actually had Jason Marsden to do the voice of of him as a black cat who's immortal. The special effects was actually done by Ribbons and Hughes Incorporated, so they did the CGI effects on the movements of, of Factory Binks as a cat, a black cat. Then, of course, you got Charles Rocket from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, former cast member. No longer with us, sadly. And you also had uh, Doug Jones. And this is one of his earliest roles that I've seen from him. He plays Billy the Zombie. <laughs> He's very good in it, too. <laughs> and it started out as a, a bad zombie at first. Mostly because he was uh, the lover of, of Winterfield. But then he suddenly turns out to be very good later on. So, yeah, he changed his ways. <laughs> um, but had some nice practical effects that they used. A lot of visual effects that they made for this movie. And the story is basically about um, three sisters, the Sanderson sisters... Yeah, Winfield, uh, Sarah, and Mary. They're about to create um, a potion to steal children's souls in order for them to become younger again. So they basically kidnap all the children. They kill them once they tried out the potion. So it, it was a fun movie. It really was. Um, a lot of great music that they use. Great score. And this was... Um, Believe it or not, uh, Kenny Ortega, because he's been best known for becoming a dance choreographer with movies like Dirty Dancing, you know, Shag, and Root Tops, and any other films that he's been working on as a dance choreographer. And, of course, he went on to direct the high school musical movies, yeah, most of which that really suck. I I'm sorry, but I'll take Grease over that any day. But he did work on uh, Michael Jackson's This Is It. So I was very proud of him to see that he finally gets to work on a good movie. That was supposed to be the actual concert that was going to be scheduled. This was going to be his, Michael Jackson's final tour. And sadly it turned out to be. Because you know, his death occurred later on. And before the movie got released. Yeah, anyway. But this movie, 
finally got its uh, popularity from DVD sales. You know, they were like selling tons of them. Uh, it actually got a book, which was called uh, Hocus Pocus and Focus, The Thinking Fan Guide to Disney's Halloween Classic that was done by Aaron Wallace, an entertainment critic, which actually had four birds uh, working in. And they even had, um, you're going to love this, the Hocus Pocus Villain Spectacular that was part of um, Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party that, that they were playing at the, uh, the Magic Kingdom in Orlando, Florida. You had Walt Disney World. So surprisingly, you can find some clips on YouTube. And also you can find some extras for the movie that is so rare because sadly this releases bare bones there's no features at all just the movie now you get previews though but that's it and it's also good to see that uh, Mick Garris had work on the screenplay uh, along with Neil Cuthbert with David Kirshner uh, writing the story along with Mick so it's really interesting to see Mick Garris actually working on a film like this because he's been known for doing uh, some horror films too, including uh, Stephen King's Sleepwalkers. Yeah, I, I figured that might have been the inspiration to uh, The Black Cat, but actually it was David Kirshner, who had a daughter, that actually inspired to do this story, because he actually found a neighbor's black cat that come along and he thought it would have been like if if the black cat um, was once a boy that was turned into it. So, yeah, yeah I, I'm kind of talking way too much about this, but I just want to give some history about it. And But that's okay. I'm, I'm going to continue with the review in just a moment. Now, when this movie first came out, it was critically panned by critics, including Cisco and Ebert, which put this on their worst list sad to say. Yeah, which they put it along with Super Mario Brothers, which that too is becoming a cult favorite, which I don't understand. Because I do think Hocus Pocus was a better movie than Super Mario Brothers. The live action movie, that is. And it really deserved its cult following. It wasn't a bad film. I mean, I, I really don't understand. I mean, they, they always... They always give negative reviews to goofy comedies, especially ones that are dark. I mean, they, these are the same critics who also gave negative reviews to Return to Oz and The Black Cauldron. I kid you not. If you look at those critics out there, you probably will find out. Especially if you look at it up on Rotten Tomatoes. Because this movie got a 30%, sadly. But surprisingly, the audience reaction gave it a higher rating than that, so it deserves so. Yeah, it's such a shame. But then, you know, there are some film critics who actually gave this movie a pass, so at least they understand. I, I just really, I just really don't understand the negative reviews on this film. That's why this movie deserves better, and I'm glad it did. And of course, they're actually going to get a sequel. Well. Originally, they were going to get a sequel for this, but sadly, I just found out recently that they're going to actually do a remake of it instead, without the original cast. And it's going to be on the Disney Channel, too. So it's going to be a TV movie remake of the same film. And I say forget it. I mean, like Billy the Zombie said, go to hell. But Disney has already been there, and it's quite lovely. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm just putting that reference in there. Well, anyway, let, let's get back to the film. It stars Bed Mittler, with Sarah Jessica Parker, Kathy Jimney, Armory Katz, Vanessa Shaw, uh, Fora Birch, uh, Sean Murray, Doug Jones, Charles Rocket, Stephanie uh, Farrisey with Amanda Shepard, Larry Bagby, Topias uh, Janex with uncredited cameos by Gary Marshall and Penny Marshall. 
It's written by David Kirshner, came up with the story along with Mick Garris and Neil Cuthbert, and it's directed by Kenny Ortega. The movie began set on Halloween night, October 31st, 1693, near Salem, Massachusetts. We meet a teenager named Thackeray Banks, who's played by Sean Murray, who is trying to seek out for his little sister, Emily, who's being kidnapped by three witches, the Sanderson sisters, Winnefield, Mary, and Sarah, all played by Bette Midler, Kevin and Jimmy, and Sarah Jessica Parker. Winnefield is the leader of the group who goes around creating the magic spells especially on her book that actually has an eyeball <laughs> it was actually created uh, by scratch you know, it looked like they used some brown clay just to create the, that particular book for the cover it has all these uh, chains around here and there but it has all the, the magic spells that's all written for her and yeah, she's the strongest of the group, too. Uh, Mary is uh, a goofy type, but she has a sense of smell. And she's very good at it, too. While Sarah is basically a ditzy blonde, a sex appeal type, <laughs> who loves to flirt with boys and, and basically make love to them. <laughs> yeah so to speak. <laughs> well, anyway, their plan was to steal children's souls by creating the potion so they can try it out in order for them to stay younger. So they had to suck out of their souls to become the younger Sanderson sisters. Thackeray had came to the rescue trying to save his sister, but it was too late. As he got attacked by them and actually turned Thackeray into an immortal black cat. So the townspeople decided to hang them just when they started to create uh, their magic spell so in order for them to, to make a comeback 300 years later if a virgin had lights up the black flame candle. Yep. And flash forward to 1993 is when we see a new kid in town named Max Dennison, who's played by Omri Katz, which his high school teacher was uh, telling a story about the legend of the Sanderson sisters. He was very skeptical at times, mostly because he doesn't believe in all this stuff. He thought all of this was hocus pocus, in a way. But, um, his love interest, uh, Allison, played by Vanessa Shaw, actually believes in it, and and that's what <laughs> that's what makes that connection to Max because he really loves her so much that now he's starting to believe. So he actually gave um, his phone number to her, but yeah, that didn't work out at this point. So he was about to go back home, just finishing uh, unpacking everything, also getting ready for Halloween. That is until he's being bullied by two bullies, uh, one named Ice and the other one, yeah, which his uh, real name is Ernie, and the other one is Jay. They're both played by Larry Bagby and Tobias Janek. And I know they call him Hollywood because he's from L.A. And not only that, uh, while Max was riding on his bike uh, all the way through the cemetery, they took his uh, Nike cross-training shoes, so he left home without it. Yeah, that sucks. So he got so upset because of it, because now he... Yeah, you know, he, he almost wished he didn't move here in the first place because he misses friends. And he thought things were a lot better in L.A. than it was in, than it is in Salem. So he went straight back to his room. That is until his sister, Danny, who was played by Fort Birch, was dressed up as a witch for Halloween. Yeah, They both lived with their parents, Dave and Jenny. 
Yeah, their mom and dad, played by Charles Walker and Stephanie Horacy. They're actually going to be dressed up as uh, Dracula and Madonna later on for their Halloween party that they're attend to. Which, that's going to be later in the film. So, they went out for trick-or-treating together. I mean, Max uh, decided not to dress up um, in a costume other than just wearing a, a baseball cap and wearing some black shades of glasses, of course. <laughs> and he's just wearing a jacket, so he's just dressing up like, like just a typical baseball type or a rapper or whatever. But I decided to take um, Danny to for trick-or-treating. So things were going okay until Ice and and Jay just came over and, and started uh, trashing everything. Uh, Danny was trying to get back to those guys even though they did find out that yes this is that uh, Danny's of course the sister of Max. Well, they started teasing him, and right in front of his sister, he decided to take the trick-or-treat bags filled with candy to, to these two guys. And they decided to leave. Um, Max got mad at Danny because he actually embarrassed him in front of everybody, and she cried because of it. You know, she wanted to go back home, but... But Max didn't mean what he said to Danny. So then suddenly, they want up on yeah they want up on, on the pumpkin patch where it turns out to be the home of Allison. So they're about to have a Halloween party too. But she thought it was boring. So anyway, their their plan was to go to uh, the Sanderson sisters' cottage, which is a museum, but it's been shut down for years. I guess they had to do some um, construction work or some sort, or maybe they're just shutting it down for good. They decided to peek inside about what was it like over there. It has all the stuff that they use, like even though they started selling some candy and everything, they, they use this as a tour. It has the uh, the witch's book inside, all, all sealed up, and all these other potions that they got all around. And not to mention all the candles, including that one black frame candle that Max accidentally lighted up because, well, he's a virgin. <laughs> but, but the moment that he light up the candle, that's when the Sanderson sisters had a wife 300 years later. And now they're about to attack Max, Allison, and Danny. So then, yep, they, they escaped. <laughs> Max is just basically trying to play like one of those uh, leaders where he was about to go after them. He actually lights up using his um, lighter and light it up on top of the, yeah, the fire sprinkler. And it actually springs out uh, the Sanderson sisters, so they escape. They're they're ready to call the cops just to go, just to warn them that they they just freed the Sanderson sisters back to life, and they're trying to find a way to stop them, but no one seemed to care or listen. But meanwhile, the Sanderson sisters have begun to find out that things have changed, and they noticed that the, the river that they had had turned into a road. So then they got picked up by a bus driver. And <laughs> that was a pretty funny scene, too. Um, also, uh, Max, Allison, and Danny had escaped with uh, Fackery because now they begin to find out that yes, Fackery does talk because since he's the, the immortal black cat, and then the which Fackery explains that to them once they went to the cemetery that. The main reason why he was a black cat the whole time was that he was a teenager trying to ready to be just ready to save um, his sister Emily, but it was too late because he never had a chance. That is until 300 years later 
some air it just <laughs> light up the black flame candle <laughs> okay yeah uh, nice going airhead back to the Sanderson sisters um, they were on the bus they accidentally run over um, what seems to be Fackery they didn't seem to know that um, when they were riding around because Fackery was was uh, hiding out uh, underneath the sewer along with Max, uh, Allison, and Danny. Yeah, they hide out and they're trying to escape but then they didn't realize uh, that the Sanderson sisters were in the bus. Well, anyway, they got out of the bus. Uh, they're, they're walking around while the kids out there were trick-or-treating. They wind up inside, you're gonna love this, a house where it features uh, Gary Marshall as the devil, because <laughs> he was dressed up as the devil, and and his sister, which is which he plays uh, <laughs> his wife in in this movie, that's played by Penny Marshall. They thought she was Medusa because of the curlers that she had on her hair. Yeah, the devil and the devil's wife. Yeah, they thought it was their leader, <laughs> but. <laughs> That was just so funny. I mean, basically, uh, the devil's wife is the mean one. <laughs> he wanted them out of there, and well, they're just uh, they didn't realize it too that, that that you know that they were actually wearing costumes, but I know they weren't. Yeah. But then again, the Sanderson sisters realized that they thought uh, the devil was their their master, and <laughs> and he has a wife and all that. Well, anyway, they, they came in, you know, they they were doing some dancing, and, yeah, Mary was just watching the TV that features a commercial, yeah, featuring a baby. Winterfield just went to find some other stuff that, that she needs, because there was, like, a lot of um, kitchen supplies that they had, just for, maybe to use it to, to go after the children. Yeah, and, and Sarah's just going around <laughs> dancing. With the devil, <laughs> but the devil's wife decided to kick them out, uh, along with her dog. <laughs> okay, I, I know I'm just getting to it. So then, um, Max, uh, Allison, Danny, and Factory decided to go all the way to to call the cops, just to go, just to tell them that they they released the Sanderson sisters. Only to realize that he wasn't really a cop. Yeah, I go figure. Since no one would believe them that they decided to go to the Halloween dance party. Just to warn um, their mom and dad that, that the Sanderson sisters had arrived and they're about to go after all the children. But just hoping that it's not a joke. And that's when the Sanderson sisters had arrived and on scene. And that's where we get to hear the song, I Put a Spell on You. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a great song, too. That was sung by Bette Midler. It definitely works so well that it makes sense. <laughs> and they also warned them not to listen to what they sing because that's what causes them to become their slaves. Now they're beginning to enjoy themselves and everything. Yeah, they basically just listen to their commands instead of... Uh, their son and daughter. And of course his friend and, and and the cat. So their plan was to stop the Sanderson sisters by by using all these uh, pranks that they decided to do like such as actually locking them inside a ceramic um, boiler room inside the high school that they went to. Yeah basically one of the tricks by <laughs> like like it was like a, a radio broadcast that they were doing yes they put in the the boom box inside and and then <laughs> they want up inside the the boiler room they're burning up higher and that's where we see all the green smoke coming up, all the way up on top of the roof all the way up into the sky so now their souls had disappeared yeah so they're trying to kill them 
so they won't come back again. So now they went back home, safe and sound, but they're still at the party, you know, their parents. So they decided to stay over and sleep for a while. And once they were up at 5 o'clock in the morning, you know, they were hoping maybe they'll stay for a little bit and just to get ready, only to find out that the Sanderson sisters had came back, back inside the, uh, the ceramic boiler room. <laughs> so, yeah, because I guess the spell suddenly uh, brought them back to life again. <laughs> so that didn't work. Since they already took the book, the Sanderson sisters suddenly kidnaps um, uh, Ice and, and Jay since they're just hanging around you know, eating Hollywood candy and everything but they're just waiting at night just you know just looking for some chicks but uh, I know this happened in the middle of the night though and they just kidnapped them uh, getting ready to actually use their potion that they're going to make in order to suck out the souls of them so they could become younger well but the problem is the book wasn't there so so they realized that yes the book was at the house and you know that's when the the eyeball had opened up and and suddenly it starts to appear that just right when the riches uh, at their cottage were, were about to ready to go after them with their brooms, their mop, and their vacuum. <laughs> well, because it's the only way to go since they don't have any uh, witch brooms. <laughs> Just the broom, mop, and and vacuum. Yeah, yeah, it, it was pretty clever. They had to come up with that. I thought that was pretty funny. So they had to go after them, and they kidnapped Danny. Just so now they can use it this time around. So now it's up to Max and, and Allison to the rescue to save Danny, pulling out a trick that they're pulling at against him. And this is where I love that moment where Max was like saying, there's only one thing that can, that can stop you, and that is daylight savings time. <laughs> Yeah, they just pull a trick by actually putting in the filters uh, on the yeah, on the van. They just to trick them out, so they had to drive along. They chased them, and then of course uh, Billy the zombie, as we know it. I mean, although we did saw him earlier, actually chasing yeah Max, uh, Allison, Danny, and Thackeray around, and that is until he's now. He actually uses a knife and actually rips off his mouth that's filled with moths that came out of his mouth. And that's when he starts to yell at Winifield. Because believe it or not, you know, he was actually her lover. <laughs> yeah, I never thought that. Now, now he finally changes his ways. And that's when he says, uh, he started saying all these words to her. That got her upset, and he thought <laughs> he wanted. To, he always wanted to say that. <laughs> so now he becomes a good zombie, and he's trying to save their lives this time now. And then their plan was to actually set a trap for them. Uh, Allison brought in the salt, which she bought earlier, to stop them. And they set it up to the grave site where. You know, Billy was supposed to be. Just so they can go after the Sanderson sisters, just getting ready to go after Danny. But then Max decided to to take the potion from them, and he drinks it. So now Winterfield's about to steal his soul. But by the time sunlight uh, had rise, that's when the... Yeah, that's when... Winterfield had now became a statue. Well, Sarah and Mary had, had went up in the air. They all explode along with Winterfield, and now everything was going great. So now the, the witches are gone. 
Thackeray had finally um, came to life after he, he was ready to attack um, Winterfield and got knocked out unconscious, which basically, you know, he died. But his soul finally reappeared, and now he finally found his sister, Emily. So now everything went back to its place. So now they're together again after 300 years. And the movie ends. <laughs> yeah, there. I know, I, I gave away some, maybe some spoilers in there, but that's okay. Um, I always thought it was a fun movie. It was hilarious. Um, it was cool, and and plus, you know, it, it was goofy, but I loved it. Um, I love the cast that they chose. Um, I thought Bette Midler definitely did a great job, too. In fact, this is actually her best role in years. In fact, it's definitely my favorite role of Bette Midler, uh, since um, her roles in Down and Out of Beverly Hills and uh, Rootless People, as well as uh, Big Business. And the First Wife's Club also, and The Rose, well, come to mind. Yeah, and even Beaches, too. <laughs> well, anyway, this was a, a definitely good role for her. I mean, she definitely nails it right out of the park as Winterfield Sanderson. I mean, this is definitely this is definitely the, the biggest challenge that she ever got in her career. I mean, she really loves wearing the wig and... And the, those buck tooth teeth of hers, and it really shows uh, how strong she really is. And I really love the song that she did for I Put a Spell on You. It was a perfect choice for the movie. I also love Sir Jessica Parker's performance as um, Sarah. Yeah, she's definitely hot, no doubt about it. She's very sexy. And I definitely love her song, uh, Come Little Children, that was actually written by James Horner. But she definitely did a great job uh, actually singing this song while all the children had arrived um, already un under their commands. You know, they're like walking around like zombies, in a way. Because they know they're going to bring in more children just for to steal their souls. So they become younger forever. <laughs> but she was fun. I mean, it, yeah, and I know she's always goofy too. I mean, she's she always does all these uh, crazy things, and yeah, she always likes to flirt with guys. I mean, it really shows. And of course, um, Kathy and Jimmy. She was very good as uh, Mary. I mean, she's also goofy, but she's she has a strong sense of smell. She she loves to find out if if she smells. Um, something sinister like like the children might be around somewhere so they came around just to find out and there you go <laughs> yeah and she always does that uh, strange look too <laughs> yeah they were good together no doubt about it and i also love omri katz as max dennison he was definitely good in this film he definitely nails it right there I mean, because it really shows about what was it like being a new kid in town. Uh, Vanessa Shaw is very attractive uh, as Allison, his love interest. Yeah, Fora Birch was very good as Danny. Yeah, she's basically uh, a spunky type, as I could tell, because, you know, she loves, even though she loves Halloween, you know, she loves a trick or treat and everything. I mean, she's also likes to swear around, like, even calls his brother jerk face <laughs> and all that. Yeah, and plus she was sweet and cute. Yeah. yeah, I mean Jay and Ernie were complete jerks, but they were good anyway. Yeah, ice. Um, although luckily for for Max, though, at least he got his Nike cross training shoes from. From Ernie back, so even though they were both trapped, <laughs> yeah. Charles Rocket, uh, God rest his soul, he was good too as uh, as the father, you know, dresses up as Dracula, and, and of course uh, Stephanie Farsi as dressed up as Madonna, yeah, 
as her mom. I love the score that was actually done by uh, John Debney, which I know uh, other composers like the James Horner, yeah, just wrote some of the music and other people as well, so they joined in. But the score was perfect. It, it definitely has that dark fantasy feel to it. It totally works. Um, love the writing coming from Mick Garris and Neil Cupboard as well as David Kirshner. They definitely did a great job. I mean, they really showed that they really enjoy their work so much that it really deserves it. I mean, even for a Disney movie. Um, and of course, Sean Murray was very good uh, playing the Factory Banks. Yeah, definitely the perfect choice to play uh, a teenager for this film. Also having Jason Marsden doing the voice of a Factory as the immortal Black Cat. It works. I definitely, it's like I couldn't even realize if, if it's either Sean or, or Jason. <laughs> but it was them. It was a delight. I mean, this was definitely the perfect film for Halloween, and it shows. I, I really enjoyed it. It really deserved that cult following that it needed to be. I mean, I wish it was a bigger hit when it came out. But sadly, it didn't because you know, Free Willy came along, and that took its spot away. And I know movies like The Firm and In the Line of Fire were bigger hits, uh, as opposed to Jurassic Park, uh, Sleepless in Seattle... You know, come to mind. Uh, I know Last Action Hero didn't do so well, sadly, but I wish it did. Uh, but it, it really deserves it. I mean, maybe the film had gotten released in the fall of 1993, but I know they didn't want to compete with another Halloween film called The Nightmare for Christmas. I could see why. But I think they could have had gotten a September release, and that would have helped. It, it would have became a big hit for a while until uh, The Nightmare for Christmas comes out, so that's true. But I know Cool Runnings came out, so that pretty much took its spot, but oh well. Yeah, because I know The Good Son came out, and that was a success, which I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, this movie's better than The Good Son, that's for sure. It's also my mother's favorite film, too. Yeah, my mom loves this film a lot along with my family, so I'm, I'm happy that they did, especially when I finally got the Blu-ray and DVD. Definitely watch this film for yourself. I mean, if you love this movie so much, then pick up a copy on Blu-ray and DVD, or just a DVD if you, if you must will, because it's definitely worth watching more than once. No doubt about it. It deserves its, its time an effort to it and I'm glad to see it got its popularity it deserves right here so anyway that's Hocus Pocus and I give this movie four stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye